Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the next session of AGL Profitability Hub. Um, and this is the M&A session. I'm really excited uh, to have Morgan Linné from Gambon Partners uh, on our discussion today. He's one of the partners with, uh, with Gambon and he's been there for 14 years, but I will uh, leave the introduction to him. So please, Morgan, can you please introduce yourself to the audience? Hi everyone, glad to be joining the conference. Thank you, Simon, for the invitation. So um, yes, I, uh, I am one of the three historical partners of uh, Campbell Partners who, uh, who acts as a boutique advisory firm in M&A fundraising and, uh, and corporate finance advisory. We, we've, done, we've been doing this for 15 years now, uh, operating from Paris, uh, San Francisco and Beijing. Uh, and pretty active in the travel and tourism industry. That's one of the verticals. Uh, I started about seven years ago, and uh, we try to provide uh, global advisory to, to online and technology-related firms in travel. Um, over the years, we've completed roughly 45 deals, uh, and uh, we try to be uh, very focused and very industry-specific when, uh, when we provide advisory. So we, we, we have a team of uh, 40 people uh, globally, uh, 10 are dedicated to travel, and um, that's it. We're, uh, we're happy to be uh, joining the, uh, this conference in a very specific period of our life. Absolutely. Thanks, Morgan. And I just, that would have been just my next question. While we're all uh, on lockdown pretty much on a global basis, where do you reside at the moment? I'm, uh, I got a sanitary lockdown in Provence in the south of France. Uh, under the, the olive trees and the, and the sun. So pretty, uh, pretty lucky to be there. Wow, this sounds like a holiday, but since yeah. we're in a special situation, it's probably not a holiday. So can you, like, we would like to give the audience a bit of a feel about M&A and investment banking in general. Um, first of all, we, we at AGL Consulting are extremely proud that, uh, that we have been able at the end of last year to form this partnership with Gambon Partners. And, and maybe you want to quickly uh, allude to the audience what this partnership is from Gambon and, and why you have chosen AGL sure. to do that. You know, of, of course, um, basically we, we, uh, we operate in the, in the global tourism industry and we all know that uh, there is no, there's not one single industry. There is a succession of vertical industry that differ pretty, uh, pretty significantly from one to the other. You don't, Although you're in the travel space, uh, you don't do the same uh, renting cars, renting houses, developing software, selling flight tickets, operating hotels. So um, it was pretty, it became pretty obvious for me who, who wanted to be uh, seen as an expert in this field that I needed to go deeper in, in all the key verticals that constitute the, the value chain of travel. And uh, obviously vacation rental was one of the emerging that's a massive trend, we all know that. Um, and my, my intuition was that I needed to form a partnership with an expert in this industry as I'm doing in other in, in sub-industry of travel. And um, um, because what we, what we try as bankers uh, is just not accumulate mandates. We just want to take the best ones. We just want to help on the, on the best um, uh, situations. And this is where we need expertise. We need expertise to assess the quality of businesses. We need expertise and network to reach out uh, quickly and even you know, quicklier than others to the right buyers or partners or investors. And this is why I think the, um, the focus really makes sense for our clients. You know? uh, and it's, it's basically a very virtuous circle. Uh, once you get to know the right people, you're, invest, you're even faster reaching out to them. They trust you so they would they would look at your opportunities uh, uh, basically at a higher level of priority than any, any others. So looking at the uh, vacation rental space, um, I couldn't think of a better partner than AGL. Uh, uh, obviously I'm voted by Simon. Simon and I had been, had been uh, working uh, uh, you know, from, uh, on, on a high level partnership uh, level for, uh, for a couple of years now. And uh, this helped us form, uh, I think a great combination between m and expertise Technically operating uh, transaction in the in, uh, in in the private equity space and vertical expertise and uh, embodied by Simon on the on the vacation rental. So I'm I'm more than happy to have this partnership uh, 
uh, going on. And uh, even if the world is changing, I think it will even put more emphasis on uh, your ability as an advisor to address the real concerns of an industry. Absolutely. Thank you, Morgan. And I could, there is nothing from an AGL standpoint that we could add, you know, for us to have been able to, to partner with Gambon and, and finding the right expert on, on m and in investment banking and the transactional experience for us was, was the perfect fit. So we are super excited and, and I'm sure we will have lots of uh, things to do in the coming years uh, together as a partnership. We had a, we had an awesome start, but now things have suddenly changed. Uh, while we're already working on mandate, but there's still there's still some movement. So yep. um, you have you have alluded to the the attractiveness uh, on the short term rental vacation rental space from a Gambon partners point of view. What is happening right now? How do you see the short term rental market environment from a buyer's and or a seller's point of view right now? What what is going to happen? I mean. We, we always said, and you know, we've moderated some conferences in the past and, and, and I was on stage with Graham Donahue uh, not uh, too long ago at, uh, in London and we talked about it's been a very strong seller's market. So we had a lot of demand. We had Oyo coming into the space, buying at leisure. We had Vacasa raising a ton of capital. We had, we had Sykes uh, going from Living Bridge to Vitruvian for nearly half a billion US dollars. We had, um, we had a wind and vacation rental Europe acquired by Platinum Equity, which is sort of the kickoff, I guess, of this of this seller's market. And 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 what is happening now and how do you view the market? Yeah, I think it, it will remain a buyer market. Um, you know, the money that has been raised uh, is, you know, still uh, pretty much on the bank account for all, of all these companies. They're all backed by very deep pockets investors uh, and consolidation is more than ever, I think, the play that we're going to have, uh, we're going to be facing for the next years. So um, a buyer market means a market that is, you know, basically guided and, and directed by uh, ability to buyers to price uh, companies. And obviously, the more buyers you have in an industry, uh, the more pressure it puts on prices. Uh, that's, that's a technical um, consequence of that. I'm not sure. Uh, so if, if you have a buyer, you need a seller. Uh, otherwise, there's no transaction. So there will still be, obviously, sellers on the market, uh, maybe even more after the crisis than, than before. Uh, but for me, the, the main consequence this will have on, uh, on the industry will probably be around the multiples. Uh, we've seen very high uh, multiples paid by investors or buyers. Uh, Can you explain to the audience what you mean with the multiples and on what level they are? Of course. Of on course. which which metric, sorry. So, yeah, exactly. So, um, companies are usually priced uh, uh, applying a multiple to um, what we can consider as, as the best indicator of profitability of companies. And that's what we call EBITDA. Uh, so, be earning before interest taxation and depreciation. That's basically... The, the best proxy to the cash generated by businesses. Um, and this is, this is deep, this became, it became the, the main indicator to value businesses, even across uh, uh, all industries, um, much beyond uh, tourism, and vacation rental. So, but, so usually enterprise value are, um, are um, got through the application of uh, a multiple to a, a number, which is EBITDA. Uh, we've seen transactions, and some of them you mentioned, uh, Simon, were priced double-digit EBITDA, 12, 15, 17 times EBITDA. Um, there, I think uh, it's no longer a question, um, but uh, I think the, the level of, of valuation that we could expect in the market, uh, especially uh, for sellers, I'm not sure we'll go back to the double-digit EBITDA before a few months, uh, not to say uh, a few semesters. Um, so I think there will still be transactions, but I'm quite pers persuaded that uh, these transactions will be done at a, at a much lower valuation basis than before the crisis, which in a way can, is a good opportunity for buyers. Basically, buyers had planned to consolidate the market, whatever the situation was. I think... Uh, the crisis maybe uh, will bring maybe more opportunity their way at a, at a lower price. That's, uh, I think that's one of the very obvious and direct consequences of, of, the, uh, 
of this uh, period that we're living in. So if, can we go one step further? When, when we look at STR, short-term rental, we sort of differentiate it between leisure and urban, right? Can you give the audience some of your views and how you see the differences? I mean, we've seen some pretty dramatic uh, happenings in the urban space, right? I mean, um, you know, seeing what, what Airbnb has created, the number of entrepreneurs Airbnb has created uh, that were able to build a business uh, quite quickly with, without you know, any assets or without any investments. And, and now they seem to be falling pretty quickly because the oxygen in our industries is very limited, where the leisure industry has, has different metrics, has different KPIs, and has been around, around a lot longer. How do you differentiate that, and, and where would you put your money right now? Of course, uh, I think crises have uh, put a, an even stronger marker on, on these uh, uh, differentiators. I think. Uh, Urban. Um, if I'm, if I was to be an urban PM, um, uh, I, I think uh, you know the, the level of oxygen, as you mentioned, is is really the uh, the key metric that I would I would track as an investor. Uh, it doesn't mean that you know this uh, this market will will vanish uh, overnight for sure. It won't. Uh, it, it it was a, bit, a massive trend, uh, but for sure uh, you would have really have to be able to show some level of differentiation, whether through uh, your identity, your image, uh, the, the way you, you build your community, your uh, unique inventory, the top locations, uh, um, the, the level of standard of your, of your uh, assets. Um, so um, if you were afraid, if you were fragile before the crisis, uh, first, I'm not sure you're gonna get out uh, safely from this crisis. Second, uh, this will only bring weakness. This fear is it will only bring more weakness to the to the urban side. While the the leisure side, um, yes, there's there's a, a longer booking window, so people tend to book their holidays uh, um, much more in advance, which which can help facilitate the, the management of of cash flow from, thanks to the working capital. Um, uh, and I think uh, if we look particularly at the 2020 uh, year. I think these these business can benefit from probably um, a temptation from the traveler to stay more local and to you know uh, favor ground transportation uh, to go from point A to point B. So um, in favor probably smaller units in general, smaller um, um, uh, properties where they don't have to cope with other people. Um, so. I, I, I do believe that short-term or uh, vacation rental um, business will be hit as every business will be hit. But if you, we, we run a, a survey with uh, Roland Berger in France um, last week uh, and the findings were pretty interesting. Um, every, every owner of a travel business basically was uh, foreseeing a drop in, um, in its revenue and EBITDA and profitability levels uh, pretty significant. But if you were to go down and a bit deeper into the, the difference between the, um, uh, the type of business in, tr in travel, you'd see that probably the, the, the people that are, are in the vacation rental business were foreseeing uh, a much slower uh, drop of their business than the tour operators that are sending uh, yeah people to, to uh, far yeah, uh, people uh, far abroad um, so um, all in all I think uh, the the survey was showing that uh, uh, owners of vacation rental business were were foreseeing a drop of 35 to 40 percent of their business in 2020 while the tour operators were foreseeing the drop of 80 percent of their business so it's it's proven to be a much more resilient uh, area of business and uh, that might support uh, the attractiveness of uh, of the industry we all know that is this this industry will be hit um, and uh, it's going to be hard to to find very attractive assets but for sure if you look more granularly at the uh, at the the accommodation space probably the the short-term uh, rental um, businesses will, will be favored and especially the leisure ones yeah <clears throat> Absolutely, and and we we share totally the same view uh, as well. We we're we're predicting very strong domestic moves 
um, we're, we're seeing, we will see a lot of very strong uh, domestic pickup where people will not travel far abroad. They want to be close to home. But I guess after being locked down for three months, I mean, the best is just to change your, uh, <clears throat> your scenery for a while. And then obviously vacation rental with the right cleaning standards is going to be the best result or the best way of getting out of your four walls that <clears throat> especially people in urban areas who have been locked down for two or three months uh, it's it's going to be a great opportunity. So I think we 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 bel we totally agree with you. The leisure industry will rebound very quickly, and and it will be strongly domestic. I mean, France is a very strong domestic market already today. Um, England is is even stronger in the domestic market. Ninety five percent of the business is generated in, in the UK. France is around seventy percent. Uh, Germany about sixty, which will see a huge pickup this year. A lot of Germans will still do a vacation rental, but obviously we'll, we'll stay in, uh, in the country and then uh, we'll not travel too far. And we will see very similar in, in destinations like uh, Italy. It's gonna be a bit harder with, for the destinations that have been heavily on, uh, on inbound business like Spain or Croatia, which, which obviously has more inbound business internationally, because obviously we're seeing that every country is sort of protecting itself right now. And therefore all the efforts that are being undertaken are very focused on domestic and domestic tourism and, and, and domestic uh, sources. So yeah. I, we, we, we're on the same path there. I mean, one view uh, we would like to elaborate a little bit further on uh, Morgan is that, um, so we agree the investment class is great. It will, we, it, it will bounce back. It, 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 it still provides a lot of opportunities. Yes, we of course will see a bit of a slowdown, but but any former crisis that I went through as a CEO, for example, at Interhome, has shown that the vacation rental business has bounced back a lot quicker. Being in 9/11, being at SARS, uh, these these businesses have bounced back very very quickly because it's a great alternative for vacation. What does that mean in terms of the rest of the hospitality industry? I mean. Um, so we, on one side, we have hotels, and I would love to, to have your view and visibility on that. Uh, hotels is one, service department is another, and then we had this phenomena of, of master lease companies as well, who said, you know, we're taking out fixed leases, we, we, we increase margins by, you know, to 60%, and, and now no, no reservations, no revenue, and, and hotels have different structures, right? In terms of ownership and operators. And I would love to, to have your view of what's happening on the rest of the, let's say the accommodation or hospitality market from, from your lens. Yeah, so um, again, uh, as, assuming, and we all know that everyone will be impacted. Uh, I think this will bring into, into light uh, the, need, the need to keep a, a relatively agile cost structure um if you you know prior to the crisis the winners were the ones that were able to secure assets at a low price uh even if they had to uh, uh take the inventory risk uh, the only way to make margin in that space was most of the time to to own uh the lease uh or own the asset um and because there was there was very little margin in in the space that uh, people were kind of forced to take to take really big risks. Now, uh, the wind has changed direction. Um, uh, I, I think uh, you, you, you're gonna have to be able to uh, have a certain you know, control over your event, inventory while resisting to the temptation to, to put too much money uh, <laughs> uh, to secure that inventories. Meaning um, if you're gonna have to escrow, if you, there, there should be a way to secure inventory while keeping uh, agility to release that like 90 days uh, prior to, to potential check-in. Um, so we're gonna have to, and, and this is where technology can, can play a major role in helping uh, uh, hotel managers uh, or, uh, or property managers to, to run their business based on dates, based on, dates, um, based on uh, evaluation of, of attractivity of, of the destination. So taking into account different types of events that, uh, that will, will occur uh, around you. So meaning I, I, th I see the, the next world will probably look pretty much the same than the ancient world with a, a few differences. And those few differences will probably be linked to, to the, the control and the, the good management over technology. Um, 
Yeah. But, but for sure, but for sure, um, I, I think uh, the consumer, uh, be it a leisure uh, or a, a corporate, uh, and we can also make a difference here between uh, the corporate market and, and the leisure market. We, we all know that uh, the corporate market will, will suffer more uh, than the leisure market. It will take more time to rebound. It will rebound because people still will still need to, to you know, uh, use face-to-face -face meetings, but uh, we've, we've been used and uh, we've been even forced to adopt. <laughs> forced, yeah. Widely, more widely those, those technology. And, and although I, I have a, I find pleasant to, to look at you, Simon, from my, from my garden, I, I'd love to, I'd love to shake your hand. I'd love to, to take a cup of coffee with you and uh, like touching you. And uh, um, so um, I, I think the corporate market will, will, will take more time to rebound. And uh, in the survey we ran, uh, the professionals were foreseeing a, a rebound after the summer, uh, meaning who, who is going to be in capacity to support, uh, you know, a waiting time up, up to Q4, you know, uh, and that, that raised really the question to, who was prepared and basically no one was really prepared. No one had foreseen uh, that it needed to be to have 12 months of cash of OPEX on the bank account uh, to run a, a business. And uh, this, this might be the new normal. People will really need to keep OPEX at a very high level, uh, at least reserve, uh, cash reserve to, to run the business. Uh, and always have a mattress of cash that's going to be thicker than 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 before. Um, so, um, and the last comment I would make is that um, uh, it's not because you will have to uh, take less inventory risk that the consumer will allow you as a as a manager to uh, lower lower the quality and the standard of quality expectations. I think. Uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a very smart smart uh, and and um, let's say uh, difficult uh, assessment to 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 position the level of risk that you as gonna have uh, as a as a manager you're gonna have to take uh, to secure your inventory because people will still want the same quality people will still want to be instantly uh, to be able to book. Um, and you, as an operator, you 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 want to be prepared uh, in case of of crisis as well. So you don't want to put uh, too much pressure on your shoulders, taking too much financial risk to secure inventory. So you just made the bridge from uh, cash to oxygen or oxygen to cash, right? And and yeah, and yeah we, we we see that as well. I mean, this is going to be the new the new secret is is having enough oxygen to to run any disruption and and any and, and we've seen how fragile this industry is especially the urban industry has been super fragile and 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 where i want to go there with is that obviously we've seen the latest focus right report how, how many billions the the vacation rental and short term rental business has uh, has attracted and 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 the stats of focus right doesn't even include the one billion that airbnb just got yesterday uh, as well um, yeah. so there there seems to be pretty still pretty pretty a lot of appetite and we've seen a lot of venture funding so let's talk about private equity and venture capital for a, for a second we've seen and then let's focus on venture first before we talk private equity um, so we have seen some significant amounts uh, of investments uh, in technology uh, especially for all the different uh, verticals uh, within the value chain of vacation rental, uh, Meta Search, uh, companies like Holidoo, they raised a ton of capital all the way down to companies like data companies, guest communication uh, applications, whatever. But also uh, urban operators uh, have raised quite a bit of VC capital, Guest Ready, for example, and, and, and others have raised a significant amount of capital. And, and we sort of look at that and, and said, you know, if, if, you had a, if you had a run rate of, let's say, 12 months of raised capital uh, prior to, 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 to COVID-19, this has probably compounded to three months. If you have been unable to heavily run down your OPEX and, and, and really strip yourself of any cost that is not necessary to have. And, you know, we have seen crisis in the U.S. where urban operators have literally sold furnitures on the street just to make a bit of living cash, right? So, so it's just been brutal because, you know, obviously the, the OTAs have taken 
a tough uh, side on the on the guests. So therefore, they have just cancelled all the bookings. The PMs went without money. What what is going to happen uh, with with the venture capital, and, and what do you foresee is going to happen, and what what do you let's say give us as an advice? And we probably have quite a few startups on on this call as well. What and you have done quite a capital raising for startups yourself as well. So you have uh, done uh, fundraising for startups. What is your piece of wisdom? First of all, how do you see the VCs? Uh, behaving for for the next few months to come and secondly uh, if somebody needs to raise capital in the next three to four months uh, is that going to be easy or is that going to be super difficult yeah no it's you know a uh, straight answer it's going to be the, the bar is is going to be higher than before uh, for sure it doesn't mean that uh, it, we're, we're going to be short of funding because it's not the case venture most of vcs have raised or were in the process of raising massive amount of capital to be injected in, in companies. And uh, so, um, I, I, and I think with the drop of the, of the stock of the public markets, uh, the volatility of the public markets that can even, even maybe accelerate the movement of shift from, uh, uh, from, the, from the large LPs, meaning uh, the, the large investors, uh, we call them LPs to stand for limited partners. Um, I like, uh, insurance companies or uh, pension funds uh, shifting potentially their, their risk profile from risk, risk uh, from public markets that are pretty volatile uh, to private equity. So, and in, in the global private equity sphere, we include venture capital. So uh, we, okay. st we still see um, an, an immense amount of money uh, flowing into the venture capital world. Uh, when I say the bar is gonna is gonna is gonna be higher, uh, it means that uh, for the tr tourism industry as a whole, uh, uh, you know, because it's probably one of the most impacted industry across all industries, um, there will be some sensitivity, a higher level of sensitivity from uh, from the venturing uh, investors uh, to assess the quality and the sustainability of, of the business. So first. Um, Comments: The newcomers, it's going to be super, super difficult. If you hadn't raised money before the crisis, um, the bar is going to be higher. Uh, so uh, I'd say, uh, if I, I would probably expect VCs to um, to turn down and say no to most uh, solicitation that they can receive from from you know uh, young companies in, into the into the the uh, entering the game uh but so i but i think the ones that are funded uh that are funded that are supported by existing vc investors can can very well play the consolidation scenario whereas um um and i know most vcs are or or considering uh, to favor their portfolio meaning uh instead of investing in new companies they don't already know they might um, they might double down on the companies they've invested in uh, just to, you know, to first to help them uh, go through the crisis and second to reinforce their balance sheets and potentially help them seize more opportunities. We all know that the STR market, the short-term rental market, is a hugely fragmented market. Um, and even, you know, uh, after the crisis, it's going to be even, even more true than before. The size, size will be, will be the, one of the most and the key elements uh, beside profitability and the combination of the two will will, will make the leaders tomorrow uh, but sometimes in order to reach high profitability you need you need to have a large business to to uh, to uh, control your your fixed costs so um, so I see. So excuse me, excuse me to interrupt you. So does that mean that the future venture capital investor is looking more for profitability than scale? Yes, yes. It doesn't mean that they will only look for profitable companies. When we look for profitability, uh, it, it, you know, I, I see a, a nuance here. Um, uh, you can be if if you're growing sixty or seventy percent year over year. Um, depends depending on, on when you started, but it's good, probably going to be difficult to run a company uh, with that with, with that uh, curve um, and. Uh, uh, with that steady growth uh, while, while being super profitable. So 
I don't expect companies to turn immediately to profitable uh, just after crisis, but I, I think uh, hugely loss-making companies will have a very difficult time raising more capital from VCs. Uh, so I think there is going to be an arbitrage to favor maybe lower, uh, a little lower ambitions in terms of growth, but make sure that you don't burn your war chest too, too fast. Um, so uh, yes, there will, there will be, and we, we, we could see it coming, by the way. Uh, it's, it's not going to be, it's, it's just going to be um, reinforced by the crisis, but we could see that coming uh, just yeah. before, even before, at the end of 19, 2019. Um, if you were a business that was hugely loss making, it was already hard for you to raise money in, in travel uh, from VCs. Uh, that's, that, that's, that was the reality. Uh, so this crisis will only emphasize that movement. Um, but if you're able to combine little cash burn with high growth, then you're okay. Okay. Wow, that's uh, quite a phenomenal note to, to uh, get to the end of our conversation. We need to watch the time. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to wear my red shoes today because mm -hmm. you, nobody can see them, but I'm, I'm wearing my AGL t-shirt. Uh, instead, and, and Morgan is wearing his shirt, and at the beginning of the call, I asked Morgan, we probably don't want to see what he's wearing below. This is the times of, uh, of crisis. This is the time of, of uh, being flexible, and, and I really, really appreciate uh, you being on our call today, uh, giving your absolutely amazing insights with your tremendous know-how that you have built in the online travel space, and, and obviously amazing reputation, Morgan. So thank you so much for uh, being with us today. Let me ask you sort of an ultimate <clears throat> question before uh, we move on to the next topic. Um, what is your ultimate advice as a very experienced investment banker to the audience today? Yeah, um, it's uh, the answer. The answer is, is not, you know, sh sh should be tailored to every, every context, but I'd say, um, Four, I'd say, four lessons that I think will be learned from the crisis. Um, first, make sure your concept is differentiating, okay? Look for differentiation. Um, second, don't be, don't be afraid to, to partner with others. I think this, this crisis is impacting everyone, so we need to act more collectively. Um, Probably generosity will be will will have a bigger part in our uh, in our landscape. Third, uh, protect your cash, uh, make your costs as variable as possible, while <laughs> a good level of service. And fourth, uh, that echoes to the second point: care for others. I think there will be an even an even more important movement for you know what's your impact on the world of tomorrow as a business owner. What's your impact? Thank you, Morgan. Now um, everybody knows, and I'm just changing the view on the camera, so we're we're actually both uh, on the on the screen now. Yeah. Now everybody knows why we have chosen you as an expert uh, to participate in this uh, uh, amazing panel conversation. I wish you good health. Uh, stay humble. Stay insane. And and we look uh, forward to to seeing you soon again. Take care. Exactly. And all thank the best. You. Same here. Thank you, Simon. Thank you for the team who's been preparing that for that great conference. And uh, stay safe, everyone. Looking forward to seeing you in, uh, very soon. Thank Ciao. you.